Okay, so a lot of you guys on YouTube have asked me uh, how do you weight yourselves, how much weight do I wear, um, etc. And this has always been a topic that I kind of stayed away from uh, because it's quite complicated to explain. Um, but the questions keep coming in, so I thought I'd finally do a video on this topic. Um, if you are going to uh, use this video to weight yourself to go free diving, um, please watch the whole video. We need to cover the myths, the incorrect information that you might may not that you might hear out there. We need to cover the two main strategies of how to weight yourself for free diving. We need to cover how to work out neutral buoyancy. We need to learn the risks of what happens if you weight yourself incorrectly. That's too much weight or too little weight. And also how to wear your weight belt. So we're going to cover all those topics. Uh, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I want to cover is the myths about uh, weighting yourself and any incorrect information you might hear out there. Um, you cannot use any information about weighting that you might get from scuba divers. They weight themselves completely differently. And also, um, I know there's a lot of spearfishers out there and free divers, we weight ourselves completely different to that of spear fishermen. Um, so if you hear anything about like, oh, the amount of lead that you wear should be like 10% of your body weight or something like this, please do not use this information. This is not suitable for free diving. Um, free divers, we have our own ways to weight ourselves. Okay, so there are two, uh, two main strategies of weighting yourself uh, in free diving. One is the most simple method, most often taught to beginners, is to always weight yourself so that you are neutrally buoyant at 10 meters. Now, the neutral buoyancy point is the point where you do not float up and you do not sink down. Um, the, the reason for this method is that uh, you will always float up from 10 meters. So if you're above your neutral buoyancy point, you will naturally float up. This helps if you ever run into a situation where, let's say for example, you black out, that if you're in the, the blackout danger zone, you black out, that you will naturally float back up to the surface. The last thing you want is, um, for, if you black out, is to sink back down to the bottom. Um, maybe nobody will see you and it will be very difficult to rescue you. The second method that I've learned about of weighting yourself for free diving is to weight yourself so that you are neutrally buoyant at one third of your total planned dive depth. Now, this is a slightly more um, advanced method of weighting yourself. Um, and this, this method is, is it, also, it also aims to be safe, uh, but it also tries to maximize uh, the efficiency of your dive. Um, but actually, a lot of the time, these two rules, the 10 meter rule and the one third rule are actually very, very close to each other that you might not even notice the difference. Um, for example, if you are diving down to 13 meters um, and you weight yourself according to the one third rule, uh, one third of 30 meters is, is 10 meters. So you'll be weighting yourself to be neutrally buoyant to 10 meters. Uh, so they are the same. And if you're diving slightly shallower, you would just weight your neutral buoyancy point to be slightly shallower as well. Slightly deeper, neutral buoyancy that's slightly deeper. Okay, now the next thing I want to talk about is how do you know where neutral buoyancy is? I mean, this will help you to know how much actual lead you need to have uh, on your weight belt. Now, for example, me, I figured out where my neutral buoyancy was when I did my first free diving course. Normally, the instructor will take you down and with all the students, he will work out where their neutral buoyancy point is. You can do this yourself um, as well, but it's quite difficult. You need to have a rope. Uh, you need to dive on a rope. You need to mark where the 10 meter uh, point is on that rope. You need to weight yourself, swim down to 10 meters, let go of the rope and see, do you float or do you sink? Obviously, if you start sinking, take off a weight. If you start floating, add a weight. You need to keep doing this, adding and removing weights from your weight belt until you find, uh, until you find the amount of weight, the amount of lead that you need to be neutrally buoyant at 10 meters or at one third of your total dive depth. 
And you will need to do this for every wetsuit that you have. If you're like me and you have a winter and a summer wetsuit, then you'll need to weight yourself according to uh, both wetsuits, since the whole point of weight is to uh, compensate the buoyancy uh, of your wetsuit. <clears throat> okay, so now let's talk more about the, the risks of what will happen if you weight yourself incorrectly. If you wear too little weight, what's going to happen is you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle to kick down. It's going to use a lot of energy. Eventually, you're going to get down to the bottom and you're already going to be tired. You're already going to be exhausted. So it's going to cut your dive short. Sure, you'll, you'll surface easier, but you're tired before you've even reached the bottom. So that's not efficient. So too little weight is not going to be uh, efficient for diving. Too much weight is also going to be extremely dangerous. What will happen is you'll have an extremely easy kick down. Um, and on the bottom, you'll be heavy. When you come to the end of your dive and you think you want to kick up, when you start kicking up, you're going to feel, damn, I've got too much weight on. Your kick up is going to be exhausting. And uh, you're already low on O2. You're having an exhausting kick up. The chances of you blacking out, running out of air and blacking out are going to be much higher. And on top of that, if you black out or if something happens, you will sink back down to the bottom of the sea. It will make it impossible for anybody to rescue you. Um, so please do not wear too much weight. Okay, so this is a free diving weight belt. It's made out of neoprene, so it has some stretch in it, which... Um, Scuba diving weight belts don't have, they're normally made out of nylon, they don't stretch at all. So you've got a stretchy weight belt and a quick release buckle. And uh, I want to show you how to properly weigh your weight belt because this is important for free diving. Alright, you want to weigh your weight belt as low down as possible to a point where it does, but it just does not interfere with your kicking. You see where I move my leg? any lower down and it would start to affect the movement of my leg. You also do not want to wear your weight belt too high. Now some scuba divers might wear the weight belts on their hips. My hips are actually somewhere here. Okay, but this goes across your belly. And how do we breathe when we free dive? We belly breathe. So if I put the weight belt too high, this is sitting roughly on my hips. I'm going to start belly breathing now. The weight belt now starts to resist my breathing, which is not what I want. So, for, as free divers, we want the weight belt to sit somewhere just above before it starts affecting our kick, but below our belly. So this is your hip bone, it's below your hip bone, somewhere here. So now when I breathe up, my weight belt is no longer resisting my belly breathing. All right, so that's how you wear a freediving weight belt. 